Our next speaker is Nuri Pellad El Hanan, who is an Israeli education professor at Hebrew University. Her daughter Smadar was killed by a suicide bomber. Since that time, Nurit has turned her grief into a quest for justice based on ending the Israeli occupation, which she considers the root cause of her daughter's death. I want to say something about the title of this evening, No Peace Without Justice. It's a strange title. It seems argumentative, as if someone had offered peace without justice. Frankly, I have no idea what is peace, and I have no idea what is justice. I only know that the words peace and justice are cover words for the worst crimes against humanity that are carried on today all over the world. These cover words include also words such as freedom, democracy, God, and the good of the nation. In Israel now, politicians are organizing demonstrations in the south of the country against Qassam missiles throwers. The incited people ask for justice in order to live in peace. This form of justice is this extermination of the Palestinians in Gaza. They convince the people in Shdorot that the only way for them to live in peace is to have other people and their children massacred. And these children, our children, make us, or at least make me, want to redefine the camps, redefine the word we. I think there's no other word in the world which is so ideologically charged, like the word we. I was forced by death to ask myself this question when death put me in the camp of the victims of the occupation. But even before that, I never wanted to be in the camp of the executioners. And that means that in my camp, there are many more people with kafia than with a kippah on their head. When Eld Ulmart, today our Prime Minister, came to pay condolences as the mayor of Jerusalem, I refused to see him or shake his hand. A reporter asked me, how come you receive condolences from the other side? And I told her very spontaneously, I don't. I refuse to shake his hand, because for me this man was the other side, not my Palestinian friends. My we is defined by people who want to live in peace, by people who believe that children have rights and are not to be used as chips in the blood market of politicians. My we includes mothers whose motherhood has not been perverted, and that means mothers who do not send their children to kill other children, and mothers who do not feel consoled by the death of other mothers' children. And that means that it does not include Jewish mothers who live in the occupied territories. One of the projects of the forum, the Families Forum, was, is a project called Hello Peace, where you can dial a free number from either side and speak to people on the other side, Palestinians and Israelis. In the first three months of this project, there had been 800,000 minutes of talk. If our politicians, who set such a high price on every word they utter, but set no price at all on bullets, had spent half of it in talk, our children would have been alive today. 
Unfortunately, dialogue is a very strange praxis to the world today. Mind infection is much more common. Our children are mind infected. This is the only term that can explain how nice Jewish children or nice American children or nice British children become monsters once they are in uniform. Their mind infected into believing that killing other children and sacrificing themselves is for the good of the nation or God or freedom or democracy. Israeli children learn that the population is divided into Jews and non-Jews. It doesn't matter who these non-Jews really are. Whatever they learn in history, in geography, even in science, is divided into Jews and non-Jews. Jewish agriculture versus non-Jewish agriculture. Jewish electricity versus non-Jewish electricity. Jewish water versus non-Jewish water. In no Israeli textbook is there one photograph of a Palestinian or any Arab as a human being, modern, productive, normal. The only representation of these people who are neighbors, actually, is either by a racist caricature of the typical Arab from Thousand and One Nights with pointed shoes, kafia, and a camel, and a mustache, of course, or photographs of empty places where they tell you this is where the Palestinian problem mature and festered. Israeli textbook call a whole nation a problem to be solved. And this is almost no more than 60 years after the Jews were called a problem to be solved. No map in any Israeli school book shows the international law, uh, borders of the country. The international laws are taught to be inapplicable in our reality because we act according to divine laws. The children of Israel learn about the greater land of Israel and not about the state of Israel. The state of Israel is represented as an accident of a forced ceasefire and therefore as temporary. The Palestinian areas are incorporated into the state, but whenever there is a report about population, education, employment, etc., the legend of the map says about these areas an area without data, which means without people. When you have a map of Jerusalem, institutions, government, administration, religious sites, you never see any Muslim institution or religious site. This is part of the education that mind infects our children into believing that people who live 100 meters from them are not human beings. And that exterminating them is actually doing good for the nation, good for the Jews. All the massacres that are mentioned in textbooks, and there are few, are rhetorically built in a way that in the end, you know, it was good for the nation. Mind infection and mental maps are very hard to erase. Racism is very easy to plant and very hard to uproot.